Hey guys, Kev here. And we got a really cool one today, baby. So, some of you may be aware that Craig Brown has dropped a new knife. This is the Cortex XL. And uh, I'm excited about it. So you guys know I am a huge fan of the FSD line of knives from Craig Brown. <clears throat> I've actually had a Cortex V2 in the past. Really, really like that knife as well with the bolster lock and everything. And this, it seems, kind of melds those two together, which is very interesting. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any of those to show you to compare because I just do, you know... I don't keep every knife. I, I move things along. I rotate. It's been, you know, years. Uh, so just not the way I roll. But I'm really excited. And uh, I would love to share this moment with you. I hope, I hope it is uh, a pants creamer like the last one. So let's get into it. Every time I get one of these from Craig, I can't open it. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Ah, nice. Not too much air pressure this time. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that is a beautiful freaking knife right there. Holy cow, it's thin too. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I did ask about the detent, and I asked him after he shipped it. And you know me, I always want strong, and I just made a stupid assumption that he would remember that I love a strong detent. But he did tell me he basically starts out with the early ones, uh, nice and strong, as strong as it can go, really, and then he'll work down if people, you know, take any issue with it or whatever. First thing I can tell you is it is thinner. It is much thinner than an FSD in the hand. Just doesn't have that width to it, and I like that. I like a smaller knife, and you know I'm going to make you wait for it. So hang on a second here. There is an adjustment uh hex in here so it looks like you can do adjustments not that i want to go doing that um this is in magna cut obviously titanium and we have serial number two shout out to craig um yeah all right let's move this stuff out of the way there's nothing under here let's get into the nitties and the gritties the stuff you guys probably want to see. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right off the bat, I do have a tape measure here, but if you want specs, if you want comparisons to the other FSDs and Cortexes, go check out Pocket Priorities' video on this. Um, he got a video up a couple days ago, and um, yeah, he compared it to everything under the moon Craig Brown has made, so you can get all that information there. I'm going to be more of your... Um, natural reaction guy here. So I am noticing the clip seems thinner. Is it tapping? You guys know I hate tappy clips, but it doesn't seem like it. Just kinda, maybe it's just thin. I could probably adjust that a little bit if I wanted to, but I, I don't wanna mess with it if, if it's um, normal. And it seems fine. All right, let's just flick it and shut the hell up. All right, moment of truth. I gotta stretch a little here, guys. Crack these, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay. Um, so you'll notice the uh, flipper tab comes around and locks up right under the lock tab there. That's unique to um, the Cortex model. And it's very interesting. And it does mean he has to move things around certain ways to get lock up and everything to work. It almost seems like it locks up at the bottom and the top of the lock bar, which is really interesting. Um, ooh, hello. Oh, man. I got... It feels good. It feels good. This is a thin knife, guys. It just feels so different. Now, left-handed, I don't have, like, a clip or anything like you guys to grab, but I do have plenty of scale, so... Oh, man, that shreds. 
this lock tab is in a weird location for me. You know, I'm used to, I want to get it right here. Like, I want to get it right here, but it's up here. So I'm just getting used to that. Man, it's freaking nice, though. Look at that hollow grind, man. He does these by hand, by the way, in case you didn't know. Um, Craig does hand ground hollow grinds. And it really shows on this model because you have that thin stock this time. The FSDs are much thicker, I think. And damn, that's thin. And then you have a Magna Cut. I don't know what he runs his at. Um, but, oh! I saw Dan over at Pocket Priorities having some issues disengaging. He was kind of like hitting it right here and then double clutching. But my instinct right-handed is to go like right here. So if you just come in like right here, I mean, it's clearing. So that's honestly fine. I think most people will get used to that. Try a front flip. I don't know if that really... Yeah, this knife isn't really designed for front flipping, I would say. Right? It, it, I don't think it ever was. I think it's designed to be a reach around. That's how it's designed. It's like a real, like a real, it's like a back flipper tap. It's not meant to be brought up top like this and, and flipped around. It's meant to be grabbed and reached around did that made no sense yeah i would say um i fucking love it uh, um yeah i would say the only thing that's kind of catching me off guard at first here is the um the lock bar you know i don't know i don't think he can shift it because of the design with this tab here i don't know if he can shift it honestly you know what would be sexy as hell would be a non-flipper, right? So you do a non-flipper. This could come down a little bit. You could add the tab here. Yeah, but then you you, know, you got to be able to access to flick. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of just a game of inches when it comes to where to put stuff, right? That tab is like right there. Look at that. That flipper tab is actually out of the handle, which is interesting. This thing is gorgeous. Man, ergos. So back here. Super comfortable. Choke up. Super comfortable. You know, obviously I'm going to choke right here where the handle is, where that thick part of the blade is. That's where I'm choking up. That's your choil, right? You're not choking up up here. There's, I mean, unless you have huge fingers or something, I don't know why you'd be up there. You just pull back down here. It's much smaller than I thought it was going to be. I was a little worried after seeing people post comparisons um i think people were taking screenshots from dan's video and you know they're like it's bigger it's longer than the cortex it's whatever but no man i mean it is probably but it's it's a smaller knife it's definitely not big i was gonna like i had it in my mind already to suggest an uh a mini right? But I don't think it needs that. I mean, large glove size hand, right? Like it's going to be on point with like a stout or something. It's probably going to be a little bit bigger in the handle. Yeah, so you get a little more blade and a little more handle. So it's probably a three and a half inch blade. Um, I would venture to guess it would have to be, huh? So it's coming in at three and a quarter, which is interesting. But if you come back here, it's three and a half. Overall, just two, just under eight. What the hell? Because this is 3.3. Let's flip them over the proper way, shall we? No contouring on the uh, Cortex. So, yeah, 3.3. .3. Oh, 
closer to three and a half, but not by much. It's interesting. Just under eight. Seven and a half. So, I don't know what's happening there. It's that little bit of extra tip, I guess. I don't know. But the ratios look fantastic. So, you know, it looks great. Feels great. That was me. Flicks great. I mean, it's really however you want to disengage it. Even if you just let it kind of, yeah, like I'm not really, let it hit there. It'll still clear because he has a ramp or something there. Right, you have to come up way too high for it to get double clutched. So, yeah. This is going to depend on the person there, right? We have a little bit of play. So let's see. I don't really feel anything up and down. Yeah, there, I see how he's getting caught there a little bit. All right, let's take a look inside, huh? Why not? What is this, T8? Is this a T8 or a T10? It's usually a T8. Pivot. Oh, yeah, that was loose already. Okay. I just want to see what's in here. Usually disassembly is super easy for Craig's knives. So might as well take a peek. T10. Yeah, T10. All right. So we are in. We have... Um, Tie connector bearings, you guys know I usually like to swap those over to skiffs because I'm weird. Doesn't really make a difference. Your pivot is the uh, Craig Brown logo there. Probably could push that out if I really tried. I just don't need to. Everything's clean in here. A little bit of oil. No skeletonization because it's so thin. Look at these slabs. This thing weighs nothing. Again, check out Dan's video for all those specs, weight, and all that shit. So this says number two dash M. M, 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 M. Magna Cut. And then you have his system here. You have these little screws you can mess with. I don't know what the hell they do, and I'm not even fucking with that. I'm hoping he got it set up perfect, and it feels like he did, so I'm not going to worry about it. Just going to clean off any lock faces. No washers or anything. Uh, we're going to have T10s in here holding that liner in. They're tight. Then we have a backspacer, and then the clip is held in by these two right here. Backspacer is held in by that one. And I don't know if I want to mess with this clip. I think it's fine. I don't know if that's just, it lands like, I don't know, like that one side lands a little bit off the pad or something. I think ultimately it's fine. I don't think it's a great idea to be going around bending these clips. You know what I mean? Maybe we could get it off. Let's just see. Can you get it off without... See, that's the problem. So, for those of you who want to see, we might as well show it. There's a screw there. And your backspacer comes out. Then you have... Uh, a screw here. And a screw here. And your clip comes off. And that's what it looks like underneath. So before he had like Blaine Washington and everything under here. He didn't do that on this one. I don't think it really needs it. But that's what that looks like. And then here's the clip. So it is much thinner than previous ones. And yeah. I'm afraid I'm going to snap it. So I'm not going to go further than what I just did. Just flex it a little bit and see if that does anything. But I could see 
if you had, if you have thick pants or something, these, it's possible this clip could bow out and start tapping a lot easier than his previous ones. But I have no proof of that. And uh, I'm not too worried about it myself. Let me just make sure this drives in. Yep. Now, just because it seems like he did the same thing, I'm going to take T8, yeah, T15. Just to be safe, I'm going to give it the extra Snuggies here with the Weeha. Yeah, it's still doing that. So that's... I don't think. I think it's me. That's what I'm going with. It's me. So no biggie there. Let's drop this guy in. It's all lined up. Yeah. Oh wait. I want that T10 back. Get so many. All right. So everything's back together. I'm not gonna take the liner out, but you could take the liner out if you wanted to. I mean, you could also adjust the detent that way if you wanted to bend this, but I don't know why you would do that. Um, probably not a great idea. Definitely not recommended, I'm just saying. You could, you know what I mean? All right, let's see, 3 16th, 1 16th, skiff You guys know, big proponent of skiff bearings. You're gonna want Five, oh, three sixteenth pivot. And then you're going to take one sixteenth balls. Okay. And that's how you're going to end up there. You can get those at skiffworkshop.com. There's a link in the description. You can use my code lefty-edc. That'll save you some doll hairs when you're checking out. Just put a little bit here. Now, why, Kev? Why do you need skiffs in here? All right. The answer is I've found with um, all of my brown knives that once I put skiffs in, I just get better lateral strength. Do you need it? No. Is the action better? No. Um, is he doing anything wrong? No. He's using fantastic bearings. Tide Connector makes some of the best bearings you can get. It's just a me thing. So let's just be clear about that. I'm going to put a little bit of heavy here. Like that. Just to get a little bit on that detent path. There we go. All right. Then we're just going to place this on. Like so. Then we have our pivot screw, which, you know, I said it was walking already. I'm probably going to uh, do my thing with that, Loctite it, aka possibly glue it. We'll see. I got to see how it does first after I stab the knife. Careful, careful, careful. Also want to check centering. You want to make sure that's good. Sometimes different bearings can cause issues, so, you know. All right. Centering still looks good to me, right? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, damn, Craig. No play at all. And that, my friends, is why I love me some skiffs. Because I just have n no play at all anywhere. Now, granted... I could have just tightened the, uh, there's no lash, by the way. I could have just tightened the uh, pivot. I didn't test that first. So I bet you it would have been fine with the stock bearings. Man, his tooling's so good. So I just want to test something there. I tightened it down. Fires. No play. Action is good, but you could see it. it isn't dropping necessarily back off a touch. And maybe the slightest play. So there's a middle ground here. Perfect. But you have to understand, the skips are going to break in. 
they usually take a few flicks and whatnot, and then they break in. So not too worried about it. I just want to make sure before I go doing something dumb. Just clean off anything in there. Man, tooling is so good, dude. Look at that. <laughs> That's crazy. What am I doing? Just cleaning out the inside of the pivot. You can see that black stuff coming out. It's probably previous Loctite or oil or something. I don't know. So test it one more time. I love his pivots, man. Look how long that screw is. It's just beautiful to me. Yeah, I gotta say, that lock bar is definitely an adjustment. Just something you gotta get used to. All right. Jesus, so much screwing and unscrewing. So here's what I do. Y'all are gonna go absolutely bananas because your boy just put Super glue on an $850 pivot. Oh my God, it's the end of the world. And you don't know it. It's the end of the world. So, dead centered, no lash, locks up. Has no play, has no up and down, clears, very smooth closing. And that is without any break in on the um, skip bearing so far. So I'm pretty sure once I work that in a little bit, it's going to just get droppier and droppier as we go. I could be wrong, but that's been my experience with the FSDs. So I'm going to play that out here. Uh, I'm going to put the stock ones in here. Obviously, I went as light as I could on that glue. I usually, I just put the tiniest little dot and then I let the string kind of play out. Um, and that's it. You know, I'm not putting globs in there. Um, and I mean, you have a captive pivot and then you have a um, very long screw, really good tooling. I seriously doubt I'd ever have a problem getting it out. But best thing to do is to wait. Don't try to start taking it out right away. If you just put the glue in, that's when it can get iffy. Because it's like half cured and just, trust me, not worth it. Um, I'm just cleaning up while it Loctites. So then we can flick it a few more times and see what's up. So what do you guys think of this one? What do you think? I love it. This is going right in my pocket. I guess I should test that, huh? Let's test that. Another stall tactic. So I have pretty slim pants on. Oh yeah, look at that. Just pop right in them pants. Pops right out of them pants. I mean, it's, it's real easy to take in and out of the pants. Like a little too easy. But I do have very thin pants on today, so we'll see once I put on some uh, some decker pants. You know what I'm playing? Um, the flipper tab. So let's talk about that. I think the jimping could be a little more aggressive because it's it's good. Yeah, it's it's good. I don't know, but it doesn't like catch your finger like crazy. I could slide off. See what I'm saying? But if I pull on it. I'm ripping. Man, I love this freaking design, dude. You know I'm a sheep's foot whore, and this is a sheep's foot, and it is beautiful. Oh, 
and you can grip it here, you can grip it here, you can pinch grip it here, you can, oh man, should we cut something? Should I cut some stuff? Look at that action, dude. Again, no break in yet. Give it some time. If I let that, if I push a little here, let that ball eat up some of that KPL heavy. Watch what happens. Kind of do this move. Look at that. Boom. Almost instantly. <laughs> Man, it feels good, dude. Dead nuts. Still learning that move. Yeah, no play. No rock. Nothing. What am I doing there? I think I'm grabbing, like I'm literally grabbing that corner there. Do it lefty like this. No, I think maybe it just needs a. I need a little break in at that top port part. Because if you remember when I opened the knife, it was just free falling here. So that's from my shenanigans. Um, was I gonna do cut some shit? Um, let me grab some paper. All I have is like notebook paper, but should work. So we can choke up. Yeah. So one thing I'd like to note is that the other the FSDs I got in the past. I think it's just how thick the stock was. I, I never had a great time cutting with those. Even though they had a great hollow grind and everything, I never loved the cutting on those. This, this is freaking amazing, dude. Look at that. I wonder if it would shave hair. Well, definitely took some. I don't do that very often, so also could be doing it wrong, but I lost some hair, so it definitely shaves hair. Yeah. Yeah, guys, it's a good one. I love it. 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 I'll show you some comparisons here, then I'll get you out of here. All right. These are my first impressions. Unboxing, disassembly, skiff bearing swap. I mean, come on. We do it all here, folks. We do it all here on this channel. Um, here is a CKF Dabless. Okay. About the same size there, huh? Hey? Very similar. Just a little bit longer on the blade there, on the uh, Cortex. Mini Tempest. Very similar-ish knife. Um, Brian Nadeau is a master of blade-to-handle ratio, so you're just never going to see a knife with the same blade-to-handle ratio, but it's close. I mean, it's close. Just a little extra handle on the... Uh, Cortex, but you don't have a choil on this, so there's a trade-off. Um, here's my Strix Custom, just to flex a little, I guess. This is my coolest knife. Very similar in size as well. And this is like, uh, I think, 3.3, 3.4 inch blade. Um, very similar there. So you get the size, right? You got it? You got it? We did the measurings, did all that stuff. Um, 
it's very thin behind the edge. I would venture to guess it's it's definitely under fifteen thousandths, probably closer to ten. Um, very nice. Action is beautiful. Uh, personally, I prefer it like this. It's one of the reasons I like to make sure I tighten the pivots down when I lock tight them. Um, I don't need it to go flip and just guillotine down because that's how I jack my nails up, folks. Um, and I like a smooth shake. I mean, just watch that thing, man. And that reverse flick, dude. It's so smooth. It fires like nobody's business. Still figuring this out. So I think it's just a reach arounder, guys, which is good for me. Lefty works really well, you know. Um, definitely not doing this. I saw Dan doing this. I don't know. He has the clip, obviously, being right-handed. But then what? Then you're grabbing and then you're like, ah. That's just not for me, guys. Um, anything else you could do? Rollbacks? I <laughs> basically just reach around at it. Yeah, it's a little big for some of those moves for me, personally. Um, I love how the blade fits into the handle really nicely. Um, slow roll? Yes, you can slow roll it. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway, guys, is if you get one of these, the lock bar is just an adjustment. Is it bad? I don't think so. I think it works. I think it's just an adjustment because you're so used to having it down here, you know, and then it's like, wait, why is it up there? And you have to kind of work your way around that tab and everything to make sure it clears properly. And But once you figure that out, I mean, I think it's solid. And man, the reverse flick, which is king, is excellent on this knife. Ergos are fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's a goddamn pants creamer, my friends. It is a pants creamer, and I love it. So there you go. That is the Craig Brown Cortex XL unboxing, disassembly, bearing swap, first impressions, shenanigans. Yeah, that clip's fine, guys. That's me. It's in my head. Great job, Craig. You killed it, man. This one's sticking around. Um... Yeah, I don't see this going anywhere anytime soon unless I get a cooler one. Oh, I didn't show you the uh, pattern. So this is milling pattern one, I guess, on this. And it's beautiful, guys. It really combines the best of both worlds on previous models. Because I, th I think he had like a really sunbursty one. And then he had that pattern one that was very square. And this kind of takes that milling pattern one from the FSD and then adds a sunburst to it. And it is gorgeous, man. And the way he gets it to go through the clip and everything is just spectacular. Um, and then the fact that this came with Magna Cut right away, I didn't have to, you know, try to get it in on another one to get 20 CV or whatever. Um, I would be curious on the hardness just to know what he runs it at. I would hope he's hitting 63-ish. Um, I just don't want it to be like 60-61. Um, the acoustics are different. The FSDs really bang because they're hollowed out inside, right? You have a lot of milling. This is thinner, no milling. So it's more traditional, but still has a unique sound. It has a nice clicky close that I like quite a bit and really hammers out. Excellent. This thing is a banger, guys. This is my favorite knife in a long time. That, that's the best way for me to put it. I, as soon as I saw him post this, I was like, yes, Craig Brown, another knife. He's the master. All right. That's just what I want to say right now is Craig Brown is making the best knives coming out of the United States right now. That's my opinion. And you can fight it, take it, whatever you want to do. But the craftsmanship the details, the price point, the quality control, right? The materials, and then on top of all of it, the uniqueness, the, the 
the not same, right? I don't know how to say that better. The uniqueness of his work, you know, um, it's just on another level, right? Like we all love the Oz Machine Company Roosevelt. I love that knife, okay? I want to get another one. If anybody has one for a good price, let me know. But we've seen one Roosevelt in like five years or whatever. Finally, we're getting an XL. Craig, every year, has a new freaking banging design that everybody wants. And he runs them, you know, and he, he does a good job getting them to people, I think. I know drops can be frustrating and everything. But I think he does a fantastic job. And his work is just, it's top notch, guys. I, it's hard to explain how damn good Craig Brown's work is. There's not many people on this level. I Honestly, I don't know if anybody is. You know, Koenig is awesome. Oz, awesome, right? You know who would be right there? Grimsmo. Grimsmo would be right there. And the, the, it's just a different level of just like, just excellence, you know? And, the, and Craig's the guy, man. I love his shit. So anyway, I'm going to shut up. Um, it's kind of like, all right, one last thing. It's kind of like if if uh, Brian Nadeau, right? If Brian Nadeau was having these made, if he was making these in his shop and pumping them out at a decent clip where, you know, he does customs that are excellent. But if he tried to do like the, the stuff he sends to Riot, I'm sure he could do it. It's just, it doesn't make sense for him. But like, then we'd be talking about the same level of shit. That's how good Craig Brown is. All right, there you go. I'm done brown nosing. <laughs> I'm serious though. I just, that's amazing, dude. I love it. I love you guys. I hope if you want one, you get one. I will probably try to get more if there's different patterns and shit, man. I'm, oh, goddamn, pants creaming machine over here, Craig. Love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and uh, I'll catch you later. Peace.